You know why you're here. Let's get to it. We'll get the basics out of the way. First, both of these movies started out black and white at the peak of the film industry, being first of their kind. Godzilla came out later in 1954. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get too far, let's get this pronunciation of Godzilla straightened out. The original 1950s version actually says it multiple ways. First, a fisherman who heard tale of Godzilla called him Gurira. While Professor Koji Yamane calls him Gojira. Gojira. When brought over to American distributors, it got translated or renamed to what we know him as Godzilla, and the Japanese just kind of got stuck with it. It's there on the cover, so I'm saying Godzilla. So Godzilla came out in 1954, directed by Ishiro Honda. Godzilla had the bigger budget at 100 million and box office at 200 million. And 20 years earlier, directed by Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Schutzak, 1933's King Kong's budget of 700,000, boxed off at 500 million. To be fair, time and place, the United States had a huge pull on theater and show business during this time. The work even now is an artistic masterpiece using new cinematography and camera tricks, manipulating the capabilities of film to create amazing visual effects. So, what are they about? Both movies were different creatures set apart from each other. Godzilla was subtle and had an overarching, impending doom throughout. Godzilla was supposed to be a warning against bombing and war. At the time, the atomic bomb used in Nagasaki and the upcoming H-bomb, or the hydrogen bomb. It begins with the creature sinking ships, us wanting to kill it, while Professor Kayohi Yamane, or Yamane seeks to study the creature, Gojira's radioactive traits. Godzilla tears it up, and leaves. The King Kong films went in a very theatric direction, orchestrating every scene, adding to the dramatic Gone with the Wind acting. It's horrible, Anne, but you can't look away. There's no chance for you, Anne, no escape. You're helpless, Anne, helpless. An adventure of a man who hears tell of a secret island of monsters he wants to film finds a lovely dame to bring to the party, and gets into some shenanigans on said island. While being brilliant enough to bring the beast home, you've seen Jurassic Park, you know what to expect. What do they got in there, King Kong? Ladies and gentlemen, look at Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. The beast tears up. The problem Godzilla had that King Kong didn't is that Kong had more relatable emotions and characters he protected. Godzilla, well, sort of? Striker, there's civilians on the bridge! Close your fire! Hold Let me get this straight. They're both kind of ass. They just kill everything. In all of their movies, they're both a central villain. But over the next few iterations, they seem to grow with the audience, growing fonder of the audience as we grow fonder of these gigantic action creatures. Let's talk about strengths and abilities. Godzilla has super size, super strength, skin can deflect bullets, beam breath, agility, absorbs radiation, regenerative healing. King Kong also has super size, super strength, can handle bullets, but bleeds like any flesh and blood creature. He exceeds at super speed and intelligence, and a bit more tactical in approach. He's getting stronger in size and strength since 1933 to 2017. So I think newer iterations deserve adding King Kong's 1963 charge up with lightning 
to his repertoire. Lightning bolts. Kong has a chance. Electricity makes him stronger. Now watch. Electricity makes him stronger? Uh-huh. Why do they fight? Well, King Kong kind of just got dropped off Godzilla. They said, go at it. Okay, drop him. The face-off. Let's face it, you came here for the fights. King Kong isn't new to reptiles. He knows to go straight for the jaw. Kong is hilarious because he likes to play with his food. And as for Godzilla taking on beasts of larger size and with protective skin and powers, it's no wonder that he's the king of monsters. Although they both seek their place as king, there seems to be a friendly rivalry. Godzilla's like, get up, bitch, and waits. And waits. How do we beat them? Well, uh, dumb is really like to walk into electrical lines and power down everyone's internet. Also, they fall in pits pretty easily. What do we expect? Well, most of the movies have been reimagining or remakes of their original counterpart, so I expect the same out of this installment, but better visual, special, and sound effects. Better integration of character development and story. Oh, and we might see this girl again. Oh, and, and this one. Oh, and that guy. We want to see action throughout without toying with the audience. We're tired of a little taste of action only at the end. Bring it all. Also, we expect to see MUTOs, that's Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organism, which were introduced in 2014's Godzilla. So, I hope what they're looking to do is continue with the series with these new and fresh monster types with MUTOs, while slowly integrating fan favorites of the original Japanese versions like they did with Ghidorah. All I can say is, he went off. So where do we leave off? Simple. King Kong still stuck on Skull Island. Godzilla floated away. We have an echo device. And now we leave off with Godzilla versus King Kong. Would you? Oh, and if we're comparing power levels, Goku wins. <laughs>